the first five minutes of a game can truly make or break it. Tutorials are a crucial part of the game experience, but too often they become tedious for experienced players or overwhelming for new ones. Therefore, we at Squareglide Games spend a lot of extra time creating a tutorial for our game Above Snakes that shouldn't even feel like one. In this video, I will play through the tutorial of our game and share our design insights and explain why we did these things as we did them and I'm thrilled to go into discussions with you if you agree with us or not. And in this settlement, uh, we spent the night, we were traveling and we spent the night in Hunter's Rest. We wake up in our bed and this is the night right after the incident, right after the first people turned to living dead. In this tutorial, we will experience that kind of firsthand. So let's start. We have these indicators above our head that we can play the game with keyboard or a gamepad. After I hit WASD or the left analog stick, I'm able to move in this cabin. And I'm completely free to move anywhere here. And we sprinkled some interactables into this cabin, such as this frame painting here for Hunter's Rest that should uh, add a little bit to world building and show how the settlement looked like before the incident happened. And we also have this oven where we can warm up uh, because yeah, it's a cold day and um, it's raining outside. What we want to show with this interaction here is that some of these interactables are just uh, one click. Some others are uh, to hold, like I have to hold a button if I want to interact with this oven here. This, this takes, uh, I think, two seconds. So we teach the player here without really saying that, that some of these interactables require some time. And if I move a little bit further in this cabin, I will be called from the outside and have our first dialogue, um, which is not really like much to do here. We don't have like any options uh, or something, but we are reminded of uh, the character that we are playing, that we are playing as Ayana. Let them know how your character is called if you didn't read it in the uh, first section of the game or something. So if you inspect further here this cabin, you can see some, some other interactables as these beds here, for instance. But most prominently, you probably see that backpack here that we put on the table. And uh, without that backpack, you can't escape this cabin. So we let the player roam freely, but we still expect them to pick up uh, their backpack because obviously they didn't sleep with it. And after they did, they get a little explanation explaining how the backpack works, how you can access it and what you can do with it. That it also uh, gives you access to the crafting menu and the cooking men menu, for instance. After you picked up your backpack, we also added an interactable to this crate here. So you have something to do with your backpack right away. What we also did is we added some very slight movement to this crate. So best case, it drew some attention to the player at the moment that uh, they picked up their backpack. You can skip the video back a little bit if you want to see the movement. Very subtle, but maybe enough to draw the attention of the player. They know, okay, here's something in there that I want to interact with. And if I do that, I can see that there's some loot. This is not, not really much. But what we show is that there are some, some items in the game, there's some loot and it is worth it. Uh, checking out crates, checking out barrels. And after we did that, we can open the front door. And if we do that and we stand at the porch, we are outside for the first time. The moment that we try to exit this porch, we will get stopped by the game and the camera will zoom out automatically. And we also timed that with some lightning. So this is a dramatic effect first time showing the game world and also adding an explanation how to rotate the camera. This is maybe the, the moment that you realize for the whole time you've been on this isometric uh, world piece. You can also move much faster uh, outside. And yeah, as I said, you can zoom, you can rotate the camera. This was also uh, locked inside. So we add features one by one to the game, slowly onboarding the player. And uh, yeah, note that at all time, you are able to explore your surroundings freely. So you can check out everything. You are not bound to where we want to have you. So we give also uh, all of the time freedom to the player that they can do whatever they want to do, that if they, if they want to explore, they can explore. Of course, we are locking certain things um, because we don't want you like to skip quests or something. But we think that putting players on rails is a very bad design decision, so we do the opposite. And yeah, you have your first NPC on the outside. She's called Joanne. 
and yeah she will draw your attention naturally because she has this uh, yellow glowing uh, question mark above her head and if we talk to her we will get a whole lot of information about the world and the backstory of hunter's rest and what happened to her which is basically her home got destroyed which is the house behind her we are we are kind of offering uh, helping her and rebuilding parts of hunter's rest and yeah to do that we need to uh, create tools ourselves first get used to crafting and all that kind of stuff she gives us our first quest which is uh, create an axe and we need to collect some sticks to, to do that. So after we collected enough sticks, we can craft our axe with a crafting menu. And this is rather easy. We just um, select our axe here and craft it, and then we can equip it. And with the second quest, we are asked to uh, use our axe and uh, get some lumber from, from the trees here. And then we get our third quest automatically, which is we need to get some rocks. And note that this quest asks us to create a pickaxe and then gather rocks without telling us in detail anymore what we need to do. So we need to figure out ourselves via the crafting menu. Oh, okay, we need some twigs to create a pickaxe and also the lumber that we just um, acquired. And then we create a pickaxe and we probably get rocks using it against a bigger rock. So um, our philosophy here is we give players small tasks and these tasks get bigger and bigger from quest to quest. So the first quest is uh, basically explaining every step that you have to have to do. And the second quest is more like, oh, okay, you did some, some steps and now you can make some bigger steps. And the third quest is just telling you get this and figure out how to do it. And you should be able to because you learned uh, a couple of things with the um, quest that you already did. And yeah, this is uh, our quest and crafting tutorial. So this quest is also kind of interesting because with this quest you need to heal that wounded person that has been lying on the ground here for the whole time. And you need to acquire a bandage to do that. And for the first time this uh, house here, which is the old sawmill, is opened and you can um, uh, yeah, go inside and uh, check out what's in there. And all of this stuff here is lootable. So you can you can spend some time looting all of these shelves here, acquiring items, taking this book here, checking out that barrel. Oh, okay, a pocket watch, uh, a horseshoe, uh, some other stuff. And it, it, in one of these crates of barrels, you will always find a bandage. After you acquire that bandage, you can get back to that person and uh, try to, to heal him. And we're gonna do this very quickly here. And after we healed him, we see that he's standing up suddenly and it seems that something went wrong and that person is not, uh, we cannot save that person anymore. This person already turned into a living dead. So the game is paused here and we want players to see with their own eyes how it happens, how these uh, lost souls are created. That is why we created this quest to heal that person. We went to the first fight of the game be within the tutorial at the very start, so you can encounter the first enemy in a rather safe environment. So you, you get an explanation of how encounters work and how you can dodge enemy attacks. And you will also realize that this enemy here is, is hitting rather weakly. So we, we have 100 HP and this enemy is hitting with, with five damage. So we have a lot of time uh, taking out this enemy here, but this is just to, to get used to fighting, to be able to, to dodge a couple of attacks maybe, um, to, to figure out what weapon to use uh, against those. And uh, after we did that, we can, we can take him down rather, rather easily. Yeah, I think this is a, a good way of introducing players to, to the combat system. As you can see, we are adding one system after another slowly, increasing the scope of the game for the player and always giving them some space to explore, always giving them freedom, never putting them on rails. And we think that showing the player how things work is better than having text for everything. If you want to learn more about our design insights and learn more about Above Snakes, uh, I highly recommend checking out our latest devlog, which is the farming devlog, in which we added a new system, which we call crop farming, where you can have your own garden with uh, crops and a whole bunch of other stuff. So check it out and see you there.